So what we're going to do is create a membership site using another plugin, and this one I've talked about before. It's called Exchange from iThemes. So what we're going to do is come into our plugin section, and we're going to go and add a new plugin. You'll notice there's nothing else installed here. We're going to go to the upload because I have all of it here set up already. So come into my downloads, and over here you're going to see Exchange. So I'm going to add that you notice it uploads I'm going to hit activate and what you're going to see right away is that it takes us immediately into the setup wizard right this allows us to create now you'll notice we're going to create a membership site and it shows us that little dollar sign meaning this is a paid extension that we need um, also we have to configure uh, stripe but you'll notice that I have the baseline here ready to go now we're gonna go to add-ons and we're gonna add some more add-ons right um, you'll see that there is um, a whole lot of uh, options for for add-ons and uh, some of these are um, these are a lot of these come with the plugin that you can just simply turn on. Um, if we wanted to support uh, coupons, for example, you could enable coupons. Uh, if you wanted people to be able to uh, register without giving you any information, without becoming uh, an, an account, uh, you could activate that. So there's a lot of options in here. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to add some more. Uh, extensions because remember that's that's part of this whole um, tutorial is to show you kind of what extensions you might need to be able to pull this through so um, obviously the one that we've talked about that you know you need is the membership plugin and that's you'll see that right there we're going to talk about a couple others just in case but let's let's install this first all right and what you know if you've heard me ever talk about uh, Exchange for my themes. Uh, you'll know that I think it's it's really one of the uh, one of the easiest, um, and and so I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, you'll notice that something happened when I added the membership add-on. Uh, even though the recurring payments add-on is a separate extension and one that you can buy on its own, when you buy the membership add-on, you automatically get the recurring payments add-on, right? So you don't have to buy that separately, which is a really nice thing because obviously if you're going to do a membership site, it logically makes sense that you're going to potentially charge them every month or every week or every year, um, however you're going to set that up. Uh, but I'm going to add one more, all right? Again, this is my particular take on what you need. And, uh, and the one I'm going to add is related to MailChimp. Um, and so you'll see it here. Um, now I should while I'm while I'm doing this I should oh sorry and I still got to add stripe I should mention uh, this other one here called custom URL tracking so I'll talk about that here as I'm as I'm uploading the Mailchimp one um, Mailchimp the the reason for the Mailchimp one is because when someone signs up for your membership at the checkout process you can give them a tiny little checkbox that says uh, do you want to subscribe to this list? And and if they check the box, which is a very simple checkbox to do, um, you can automatically then say thank you and put them directly into your MailChimp list so you can send them information later, which is nice. Um, I promised I was going to talk about the uh, uh, custom URL tracking, but I'm, I'm going to go back in here and add Stripe. It is one of my favorite uh, payment gateways, so... Um, Exchange does support PayPal as well, uh, but I'm a bigger fan of Stripe for a lot of reasons. Uh, so I'm installing that. But as, as we do this, um, I want to tell you about that custom uh, URL tracking, right? So one of the, uh, one of the benefits uh, if you're doing conversion, if you're focused on how well you're converting, um, is to know what people navigated through, what they looked at as they were working through your site. Um, so that you know from them what helped them close the deal, right? What caused them to convert. And custom URL tracking does that. I'm not going to add it because you don't always need it, and it's a little easier when you're, or it's a little more worthwhile 
when you actually have a lot of different products they can look at and all these things. But for a membership site, I don't, I don't know that you absolutely need it. So here is what I think you do need, right? You need exchange. I think you need, yeah, I know you need the membership add-on and often you will need the recurring payments add-on. Uh, Stripe is the gateway I recommend so uh, for them and so you need the Stripe add-on. And the optional one is the MailChimp add-on, right? So, uh, and that's just if you wanna put them on the list. But now that we have all that, right? That's when you can start seeing, um, does it make sense to go to our to our setup? Now notice there's another message up here, right? And that message says, hey, use the iThemes licensing page found in the settings menu. And, uh, and the reason for that is if we come over here to settings and we go to iThemes licensing, is like with, uh, like with many of these, you have uh, an ability to define the uh, your your account information, your iThemes username and your password, and that will activate licensing on everything, so that you know you get the updates uh, over the course of time as these products uh, get updated. And that's a pretty important thing. I know, um, I know a lot of times people are thinking I'll just buy it and I don't have to worry about updates, whatever. But especially when you're dealing with payment gateways, those gateways sometimes make changes, and you want to make sure that that you're, you're set there, okay? So that's definitely something you should do. Um, but the quick setup, uh, now you will notice things are a little different, right? So membership is there and Stripe is there. Uh, you will have a link uh, to go watch a video to, you know, how to set up uh, Stripe. If you don't have a Stripe account, you can go do that. Um, but but what you'll notice is now we have a lot a lot more here going on, right? We can also do that by going to our uh, settings to go start configuring things. You will notice now we have tabs, uh, and so you can put in your uh, company tax ID, your email, your phone information, etc. You'll see that there's a couple other settings, like if you're showing or you know uh, all your products, how do you want to organize that? Uh, you also have uh, information relating to currency. Um, and whether or not you want to use the WordPress registration or Exchange registration, right? Uh, which also lets you define uh, where your form is. Now, we'll talk more about forms in just a second because there's a funky thing that iThemes uh, did with, with Exchange that I haven't seen a lot of others do um, that's really, really kind of powerful as it relates to the pages and uh, whether you're going to use your own pages or whether you use theirs. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you also get to configure the customer account page, right? So you can define uh, the the specifics of what happens when they uh, when they first get to the account page. Now the account page will have a series of links above it, like you know what products I purchased and on all this kind of stuff. But but this is your place to put. You could put an intro video. You could uh, you could put a thank you note. You can put a lot of different stuff here, right? And then we hit save change uh, save all our changes. Um, email is, uh, as you might imagine, this lets you control which emails you want this to come from, um, subject lines and, and all sorts of uh, template related stuff. And notice you get a lot of short codes that help you shape this information that goes out. But I really want to talk about this pages section because this is the one that's the most different from all the other uh, plugins, right? And that is that uh, you have the option, like many plugins, the way they work, and especially membership plugins, the way they work is that you hit, you know, right when you're doing the quick setup or something, you, you activate the plugin and it says, do you want us to set it up? You say yes, and it generates a bunch of pages. And it generates those pages and it puts the short codes it needs on those pages. There are other plugins that don't do anything. They don't create any pages. Uh, you have to go create pages, and then you have to go get the short codes from the plugin and put them in your own pages, right? What Exchange did, or what iThemes did in Exchange, is they said, tell me how you want to do it. Do you want us to produce these pages ourselves? Or do you want to create the pages yourself uh, using a WordPress page, in which case you are going to need to go put the short codes onto the page? When you leave it to Exchange, what you'll notice is they name the, the page titles, which of course you can see in these edit boxes, you can change. Um, they also define the page slug, right? So you see the URLs there. 
Uh, and that is really powerful because here, what essentially what you're doing is you are not actually instantiating pages. Now, why is this so powerful, right? Why, why, why am I calling attention to it? Well, one of the things we know about when you integrate membership sites with anything else, right, any other plugin, sometimes those plugins will want to use a very specific slug, right? Their products are... Uh, technically, we'd call those tightly coupled, right? The uh, the specific slug or page name is something that is very tightly coupled to the way their product's going to work. Now, this can be a real problem if you have what's called a collision where, you know, you want to use store, they plan to use store, and now two things crash. Um, this approach obviously lets you very easily without actually having to go in and create a whole bunch of pages and anything else and make adjustments to any code or anything else. You can come in and just say, I want to change where these pages are. For example, I, if, if all you're selling is uh, books, which by the way, um, Exchange is more than a membership solution. Exchange is a e-commerce solution which supports membership sites. But if you were if you were built, you know, selling e-books, for example, you might change your store to just be books, right? Um, and you might still call it the store, right? But your slug is just going to be books. And so, so you have the ability to do that. But you also, right, just so we're clear, you have the ability to go in and say, nope, my login is going to be a very specific page. And I'm going to put all the content I want on that page. And I'm going to set it all up. And when I set all that up, I want to specifically tell you which page is the login. That's really, really powerful, OK? Um, so uh, you know, that's, that's the core of. Uh, how this works. I, I want to go back over to our quick setup, sorry, um, and just highlight that when we come into Stripe, um, sorry, we need to go set up Stripe. Here it is. Uh, you're going to want to put Stripe credentials here. So uh, this is this is your, uh, you are given, if you go to Stripe, you are given your live secret key and your live uh, publishable key. They also give you your non-live testing secret and testing publishable key. Uh, but you're going to want to configure that, and you're going to want to configure what's called um, the webhook. Now, what's really nice is you don't have to go looking around for this over at Stripe. They have a whole um, webhooks settings section, and literally you just copy and paste this and uh, and drop it in, and you're good to go. Okay. So I'm again, I'm not going to configure in these videos. I'm not going to configure my Stripe information. There's no reason for you to have to take a look at that just yet. Um, but we're going to leave that here, and now we're going to go uh, over to uh, our, our products page or our add a product because what we want to do is create a membership. That's the whole point of all this, right? So um, when I do this, I want to walk you through, again, this is remarkably easy, uh, especially the version of what I'm showing you. So uh, I'm going to call this uh, our gold membership in line with the stuff we've been doing before. And, uh, and and I want to set up an amount for this, right? So I think in our last demo we did $10, so we'll leave that at $10. And I want to do that monthly. Notice that when I click on that, the, the monthly is essentially that whole recurring component. So that add-on is what gives me that. I can define, you know, uh, this is our gold club, right? You can You can define a lot of stuff here. You can add an image if you want. This is the image that's going to show up when you uh, put this particular product in your catalog or what have you. Um, and uh, and what I need to do is I before I before I go further to show you this content stuff is I need to actually create some content. And the reason for that is what's really powerful about uh, creating a membership site here is how easy it is to create what's called a rule. And the rule is around content. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave this right here. Um, and I'm going to come over to posts and open this up in a new window. And in, in posts, uh, the first thing I want to do is go over to categories. In our categories, I want to create a new category, right? So this is our gold category. You'll see here it is. That's good news. And we're going to come and add a new post. Uh, this is a post that we're going to want to protect, right? So we're going to um, first immediately come in and put it into our gold category. That's a good, good thing. And uh, this is our uh, 
I'm going to put some protected content. Not, not a lot of funky stuff, right? Um, and uh, you'll notice that I have the ability to define membership access right here. Now, because I haven't created that membership product or finished it, that's I don't have any options yet, so I'm just going to hit publish here. Trust me when I tell you, when we come back to this, we'll, we'll be able to do this, right? So here's my published post, which is great. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to save this as a draft, right? By saving it as a draft, I save it kind of where it stands right now, but I also get access to, um, I'm going to have the ability to create access to these new rules because I now actually have uh, content I can do stuff with. So you'll notice that I have um, protection content now, right? I have a protection rule that I can create. And what I want to do is notice that I have options, right? Posts, pages, post types, categories. So one way to do this is to say, I want to protect the category. And here I get the option and I pick gold, right? And I say, that's it, right? I'm good to go. And so in that case, I could hit uh, save and be done. That's, that's one way to do it, right? Uh, there's another way to do that, right? Let's add this guy and say, I want to talk about a post. When I do that, notice that I have the list of all the posts here. And what I want to do is talk about drip for just a second and say, I want to delay access for one day, okay? And uh, I'm going to hit publish now because now I have two rules in here, which is good news. So let me explain what I just did, right? What I said was, when someone buys this membership, they get access to all the content in gold, right? That's what's protected. Um, and we'll go look at that post in just a second, right? Um, but that's what's protected, is all the gold posts. But I also went and created a rule for a post that was very specific. In this case, I picked the post and I said, delay it by a day. That's what we call dripping content. And you, you can notice I can create as many of these as I want. I keep, keep hitting these rules, right? Um, and by, by hitting these rules, I can actually start defining a series of posts that just say, this one comes out on day one, this one comes out on day five, this one comes out on day 12. And these are all related to the day someone made a purchase, right? Uh, the zero day, the one day, etc. That becomes very, very useful to you, especially if you're in the situation where you want to make sure people don't just sign in, get access to all your content, download it all or take it all, and then unsubscribe and or ask for a refund, right? So this allows you to deliver it over time. Now you're going to notice something over here, right? You see over here you have the ability to drag and drop. This becomes really particularly powerful when you start adding uh, other kinds of, you know, other kinds of, of rules where you want to coordinate or manage the, the priority of this access. So that's very powerful. You will also notice that I have the access to um, any files that I want to protect as part of this membership. And then as we scroll down, you see all the other uh, options you have. So when someone uh, is, is, uh, signs up for this uh, membership, right, you can create a welcome message, right? That's particularly useful, right? Um, and I can walk through all of these, but you can start seeing, right, um, membership information. Who is my intended audience for this product, right? What will they, what will they get from this, right? What, how do they have to qualify, right? It's just these are just content that I can, that I can display, right? Um, what you can see here, and this is this is very powerful, right? Um, is that you can start building a hierarchy of membership sites. That is probably in and of itself a whole nother video when you start talking about um, structuring hierarchies of membership sites, but it's here. You have the ability to um, define how often and how long you will have the downloads access. Um, you can start seeing as I just click through this, right? Um, uh, these are all the, the, and some of these are stuff that just comes automatically with uh, with exchange itself, not just membership sites, right? Uh, you can also determine if you want to turn on some of these things, right? So you get a lot of options. The, the powerful ones are here at the very top as it relates to membership site. Um, and then of course, you know, I, I had already hit, I'll hit update just to make sure, but um, now remember I promised that I would do one last thing, right? I want to go back over and take a look at this particular 
um, post. So I'm going to come back over here. And uh, what happens is when I when I come over here, you'll notice that this automatically got set up, right? Membership access for that page. And remember this, I told you initially it wasn't here because we hadn't created those rules. Now that we created those rules, you can start seeing how you can create this stuff from the page itself. So while you're working, you can start protecting content or you can go do it centrally in the other place where you're creating rules, right? Um, either way, this is how you set up uh, uh, simple ways to protect your content using Exchange. You'll notice this was very fast and simple to do. And, uh, and of course, you can create as many memberships as you like. All of them will show up when we come out over to our um, site itself. Uh, will show up initially in the store. And, uh, and you know, that's one way to do it. But you also have uh, a direct, you have a direct way to um, change this, right, in that you can go to specific products and those products have URLs. So here's my store, right? Uh, notice it's very plain because I, I didn't add images or, or really any text. But you'll notice when I go to this product, I have a product URL, right? So I don't even... Uh, I don't even have to take you to a store. I can actually take this URL and create a button on any part of the page and say, hey, come sign up for membership right now and take you directly to this page um, where you can hit the buy now. And um, the moment I go to uh, the moment I go to purchase this, right, uh, it will take me over. Now, this is going to tell me, like we did in the other demo, that I haven't really configured my uh, Stripe setup, so it's not actually going to go forward. In fact... I think it's trying right now to figure that out. But anyway, that is, uh, that's how easy it is to work with Exchange and to create membership sites using it. Thanks a lot.